Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Today we have NAV Payroll and they will be presenting to us Payday Should Not Be Painless. I'm sorry about that. Payday Should Be Painless. There shouldn't be any pains to payroll payday. <laughs> That's so, <right>. um, <laughs> yeah. So I just want to let you know that um, our webinars are recorded and it will be available later today um, for your viewing and you can share it with any of your colleagues and friends. And we just asked that if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, type them into the questions box and we will get them called out toward the end of the webinar. And so now I will turn it over to Drew and Witt from NAV Payroll and they will start our presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you. This is Witt Lester of uh, NAV Payroll. Uh, a VP of Sales for NAP Payroll. Thank you very much for taking the time to review this webinar. Uh, we're just going to go over a very brief introduction about what we're going to be going over today and kind of the strategy behind NAP Payroll, and then we will dive right into the uh, presentation. So with that in mind, here we go. Uh, NAF Payroll was designed with the mindset that we want to provide a payroll solution that companies that are currently using the NAV ERP system could use to manage payroll within NAV, uh, but then also be able to leverage the information that they then have access to um, for other financial uh, analysis and, and to be able to strategize and, and analyze the company in a deeper way than they've been able to do. So one thing that we found is that particularly with US, with US manufacturers, labor accounts for 25% of your total cost structure. So that's the second biggest next to materials. And what makes NAV payroll unique compared to any other payroll solution that's out there, be it QuickBooks or Serenic or Workday or you know, take your pick, is that uh, is our ability with NAV payroll to provide labor cost and job cost analysis. So as we go through this presentation today, we're gonna show you how you can process payroll and how that information is broken down to kind of make your life easier but then also how you can leverage uh, certain aspects of, of the NAV functionality that you like and love in order to uh, drill down into labor costs and job cost analysis. So how does that really benefit you, the user? You know, if you understand what your labor costs are, what your job costs are in a more detailed way, you can understand how much you need to be charging for product lines. You can uh, analyze, you know, if certain product lines are actually profitable, if so, how much, you know, uh, profit are they generating or do you need to change any prices? Do you need to dis discontinue some product lines? Um, if you uh, operate in an environment where you utilize the jobs module, you know, how much labor is actually going into these jobs or more particularly into the tasks within those jobs? And you know, what are your labor costs per item? It, it, those sorts of questions can be answered with this system. So as we go through our presentation, you're going to see that it's more than just a payroll solution. It's also a financial analysis solution. So why NAV payroll? It's built in NAV, so there's no more double posting of entries. You can, uh, uh, labor costs can post directly to the item ledger. You do have a jobs module integration. Because it's built in NAV, you can also utilize NAV dimensions. We do offer an outsourced payroll solution, so if you want to leverage your, uh, uh, if you want to be able to leverage the analysis capabilities of NAV payroll, but you don't want to deal with the quarterly filings, you can do that with our outsourced payroll solution. Uh, the fact that we have a, a plug-in, uh, a, a integrated NAV uh, payroll solution then also makes, it adds value to your broader ER, uh, NAV ERP solution that uh, Inovia is, is providing you. Uh, this feature, uh, the, the labor costing in particular, ap appeals a lot of times to the strategic levels of the organization so you know if you're uh, if you're working in the payroll department now and you're you know really wanting to get a new payroll solution uh, but you don't necessarily know how to present that to the controller or the cfo or the ceo the fact that we have a labor costing capability typically appeals to them because it'll make their analysis uh, cut down on their time needed so it can help you push this internally and then we also have uh, now payroll available for uh, D365. So uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Drew and, and take it away. Okay. Hey, thanks again for uh, joining. Uh, I'm going to go through um, 
some payroll processing and just walk you through an employee card um, process of payroll, an individual payroll document, import some time, and then also show you some of the features that make um, it easy to use. Um, and you know, it was really designed from the beginning. Um, I, I was a NAV uh, user before um, a implementer and consultant, and and eventually, um, you know, a, a developer of this NAV payroll system um, with a lot of help <laughs> that I had, but. Um, this was, you know, from a user perspective, trying to make things easy, quick, simple, um, not having, you know, a million things to set up um, just to get uh, your payroll run. Um, that was the idea behind it. Um, so with that, let's go into an employee card. Um, so quickly, we'll run through this. Um, there's, you know, general information, uh, communication. We can, we have the ability to email check stubs and file ACH. Uh, create ACH files for your bank. So if you want to do direct deposit and just email out check stubs, then this field becomes pretty important right there. Um, employee posting groups, uh, these work the same as any other posting groups in NAV. So if you're familiar with um, some of the posting setups, you would tie this posting group to uh, payroll codes, and then that would dictate the GL account or vendor ledger that it hits. Um, so you can have, uh, you know, multiple posting groups and then direct things to different vendors or different GL accounts for maybe warehouse versus admin versus, um, you know, shipping, production, things like that without having to have tons of different payroll codes. So you don't have to set up a separate payroll code for, you know, regular time production, regular time shipping, regular time um, admin. You would just have one, uh, which makes it simpler and easier to pull information um, and then the posting group is going to direct it to the correct account. Um, labor division code, this is, we use this, this is kind of our major grouping code on the employee. Um, so we can use this for reporting, we can subtotal by it, um, we can uh, filter by it, um, we can also, we also provide templates um, so that you can automatically set up your PTO hours and things which are um, run off of this labor division. So. For example, if we go to an employee um, that doesn't have any PTO time and we just hit create PTO hours from a template, it's gonna bring in that employee number and their labor division. And it's actually gonna apply a template of PTO time based on that labor division code. So you can set up templates if you have PTO time, a certain um, you know amount of sick and vacation and things that you give to your um, people that work in the warehouse versus people that work in the office. You can set them up separately, separate templates, and then you can also do that with deductions and apply directly from the template so you're not having to manually enter all this information every time you create an employee. So you can see now we have two records that have been created from that template, and when I go in here, um, here are the two records that were created. Okay. Uh, we also have on the employee card a check preview, um, which is Pretty handy. Um, so I'm just going to pick a payroll period here and calculate the check. Um, you can see over here it gives you a little sample of what the check would look like. Um, the really nice part of, of this is that it, it shows you, you know, your total gross deductions and withholdings, and then you can recalculate things over here. So let's say I want to um, I, I want to make sure I have $3,400 take home, uh, but I want to increase my 401k plan up as much as I possibly can. And if it's not a one-to-one -one relationship because 401k, of course, is going to be uh, deductible from your, um, is, you, you can deduct that before you calculate your federal income tax. So when I come in here and change this to 500, then it regenerates my check preview and you can see 3,400. So I was able to increase this $250 and still stay above what I needed to stay above. So this is just a quick and easy way to um, modify things and see how they would turn out on the payroll check without having to do a bunch of calculations outside in Excel, um, things like that. So continuing through um, the employee card, uh, we have a login and password. Um, this is for our employee portal. So. Employees do not have to have NAV user IDs to use the portal, which is the nice part about it. It actually works through a web service. Um, so uh, it, you can give this, give access to employees through this login and password, and then they can do things like request PTO time. Um, so I'm gonna log in as this employee. 
And you can see that we can enter hours. So you can actually enter hours here and then have them queue up for a manager to approve. Um, if you have people out in the field that you want to enter hours even, and they can enter hours with dimension codes and job codes, job task codes. So you know, really a lot of functionality there um, without having to have you know your, your users that are out of the office that would never really use NAV for any other reason. Um, you don't have to have them as users to be able to write this uh, time um, to our hours tables. Um, PTO request, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just request some time here uh, to show you how this would work. And request four hours, add the line. So you can see the line comes down here waiting for approval, but I also have a lot of other nice information here as an employee. Um, I don't have to go asking my payroll processing person how much time I have remaining or how much time I'll have at the end of the year. It's all here in the portal for me. Um, I can also print payroll documents that have already been posted so I can get a check stub and send it to myself. Um, again, just trying to give uh, the employees access to those things that they are most commonly need from a payroll department. Um, and then I can get history so I can see what's been declined or approved. And then again, I have my summary up at the top. So I requested four hours, so I'll come in and approve that in just one second because I am set up as the manager of this uh, uh, employee. So that will um, make an entry that is pending for me to approve. And it'll also send an email to me at night if you have that function turned on um, that will make me aware of all the pending approvals that are out there. Um, and that way, you know, they don't just sit there forever. You actually have a, an email reminder that tells the manager, hey, you need to go look at this time and see if you uh, can approve it. Uh, withholdings. Um, we also have, of course, additional withholding abound if you need if you want to um, withhold more federal uh, than is calculated. And then you also have a bonus withholding percent, so you can uh, you know put in a, a different percent on the employee card. You can also make a global bonus withholding percent that applies to everyone. And then only if there's an, a percent entered here will it override the global. Um, so a lot of flexibility with bonuses. Um, and, and the federal tax withholding if you need additional uh, withheld. Okay, so let's go into um, some of the uh, tables here that are linked to the employee card. We have our salary table. Um, you can set up different salaries with different dates, uh, with different starting dates, so you don't have to remember right on the date that it changes to come in here and do it. Um, it'll pick up the date based on uh, the payment date in the uh, payroll document. Deductions, let's take a look at these. So you can see here that uh, on my 401k, um, the deduction limit is automatically coming in from our tax table. It's also giving you a lot of useful information here about um, the deduction balance for the year. And all of these are able to be drilled into. So you can click in here and see the total deduction balance for the year, all the entries um, that tie out to that total. You can also see the total contribution balance, um, which will show you not only the deduction side, but the employer contribution side here as well. Um, and then these limits, you know, you can, once you breach these limits, it'll automatically start, stop doing this because uh, those are the federal, you know, set limits for the year. Um, and we actually keep up with those and update our tax table with those limits, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, our tax table has all federal and state taxes um, and the limits as seen here. Uh, it's actually uh, updates the customer database every night. So we set up a job um, in the job queue on the customer side to reach out through an FTP request to our tax table and refresh um, on a nightly basis. Of course, taxes don't change every night, but um, they sometimes do change during the middle of the year, this year being a great example. Uh, we got some guidance in January um, for the new tax law. Um, we were able to update our tax table by that um, weekend. The new guidance came out on a Thursday, and then everybody got the refresh that weekend automatically without having to download anything or change any tax tables on their own. Um, you know, there was nothing to do on the customer side and just the next week, uh, the payroll all ran with the new tax rates that had been issued by the IRS. So um, we're able to make that really efficient and easy um, for the customer because of some of the, you know, functionality that's already in NAV. The job queue is an amazing tool um, to be able to run automatic reports um, and automatic uh, programs. So that being able to set that up on a nightly basis to refresh with our tax table is just a really nice way to leverage some of the, um, all the functionality that's already in NAV and make it a lot easier for the user.
Okay, so uh, that's a deduction. Um, we'll keep moving here. Um, again, we have dimensions on the uh, employee card. So of course you can set up dimensions here um, uh, on the employee, but you can also do some uh, little more detailed dimension tracking in the payroll document. If you want to apply um, a dimension template, you can actually set up an allocation percentage um, of each dimension value under the same, under one dimension code. So normally you would just have one dimension value that would be linked to the employee, but we've added the ability to come in here and add a percentage. And then, you know, you could add 10 to um, Mercedes and the other 90 um, to, let's say, I think Toyota's in here. And then that way it's gonna um, actually under the one dimension code, it's gonna allocate the expense of this employee uh, between these two dimension codes um, when you calculate the payroll document. You don't have to use the template and you can still use the functionality, uh, which I'll show you uh, when we run a payroll document. Um, so the template's just an easy way to set up kind of a standard that happens every pay period. Um, but you can actually go into the dimension allocation and allocate based on the actual for that payroll period as well or have the employee, when they're entering their time through the portal, uh, enter the dimensions that are associated with that time, and then that'll come into the payroll document. All right, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and approve this time. So you, I, um, I ask for four hours off as Kevin Costner, and I'm the manager, um, so I'm gonna come in here and say, okay, yeah, this looks like I can approve it, but let me check here. Let me see what I've already approved. So this is gonna group by date and show you um, how much you've already approved in the, for, uh, you know, for production and for shipping and for any other labor division code that's out there. That way, if you have a limit, um, you can see right here that you know, you're fast approaching that limit and maybe you shouldn't approve any more time. Um, you can also see already approved. So you can see in the summary of approved and requested, I had a few more entries. Whereas in here, I just am showing only the approved time I also have some information over here to the side. Uh, projected accruals shows me my future accruals amount at the end of the year uh, over here, and then my current hours of the employee. So as the manager, I pretty much have all the information right here on the screen that I need to make this decision. So I'm gonna select that and approve it. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and run some payroll. So, where I do, I wanna show uh, that we do have a time clock cross-reference table already built. So we can cross-reference to your time clock. We don't have to do a bunch of development to build an import. We can just put in a cross-reference number for each employee. We actually can link an Excel column to um, the er different earnings codes. So here you can see the different column numbers that are gonna come in and what earnings code that corresponds with. Um, so normally we don't have uh, much development time at all. Um, to bring in time from a uh, time clock if you're already using one. Here I'm gonna do an hours detail import and I'm just gonna import some time with some jobs and some double time um, so that you can see a couple different uh, pay codes come in. Um, before I run this payroll document, I do wanna point out that we do have an earnings rate table. So if you have additional rates, um, uh, you know, it's not just regular and overtime, you might have night shift, double time, things like that, weekend, then you can use a multiplier. So you can multiply the time uh, by a value or you can do a fixed amount. And so you can say fixed hourly, um, this earnings code will be, and then you can apply it to all employees, a labor division, you see that labor division pop up again, because that again is our ma major grouping code on the employee um, posting group or in, in a single employee. So all the flexibility of um, the similar flexibility as the sales price table is in this table. Uh, so you can pretty much do anything you need to do with earnings rates, um, additional earnings rates above the regular and, and, and overtime. All right, so let's go ahead and run a payroll document here. So I'm gonna run it on this employee that I just imported time for, which happens to be Harrison Ford. <laughs> Okay, so you can see um, some holiday came in, some overtime, regular, and then I had some double time that I imported. And you can see the rates automatically calculate overtime at the 1.5, double time at the two, which comes from that value in the earnings rate table that I just showed. We also have some jobs and task numbers that come in here. So we can keep track of our actual cost of this employee 
um, versus the amount maybe that we're invoicing out on that job and just make sure that we're profitable on that job and that job task. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and print this check. You do have several different payroll check layouts already built, so we normally can move things around to match your check stock just to make it easy on you um, when we implement. Now, this is kind of our standard, but again, these things can be moved around into a check stub stub or how, whatever format you have. And then I'll go ahead and post this. Okay, so that's as easy as, as it is to run a single payroll document. Of course, most of the time you're not going to be running single payroll documents. You're probably going to be running um, a batch. So let's go ahead and do that. Take my pay period here. We'll run the first period of March. Okay, so you can see here my four hours of vacation time automatically came in. Um, that is uh, coming in from that approval. If I go to the employee card from the batch and I just want to take a look at it, I can look at uh, approval details and you can see that I had approved time there, when it was approved, the day it was approved for, I had some rejected time before that. So there is a detailed history of all this PTO request and approval so that you don't have to keep all the paper that normally is involved. Um, here you can see we have sick time, holiday, personal. So any of these can be changed right from the header here. Uh, so if I change this to sick time one hour and I go check the payroll document, you'll see that it inserted one hour of sick time there automatically and recalculated the document. If I take it down to zero, it takes it away and recalculates the document again. So this gives you the ability to add time right from the batch without having to manually mess with any of these payroll lines and then all the lines are going to calculate automatically off the header um, which is shown in the batch. Um, also in here this is where you could do your dimension allocation so if you had um, if you wanted to allocate between uh, you know these 86 hours let's say that they did you know 40 hours of um, Mercedes and 80 and you know 45 of Toyota, you could actually come in here and split this line by the different dimensions. Um, and then it's going to show you this split over in the fact box over here. Um, you can also split the line by job. So you can come in here. I'm not showing the job columns right now, but um, those job columns can be shown. And then those would be uh, able to be split. So you could split the time into five hours on this task, 10 hours on that task. And again, that time doesn't necessarily have to be manually split by the payroll processor, it can be um, put in that way, either through the portal or through an import or through just entering the hours before you run the document. So several different ways to get the information into the system. Of course, you know, using the portal and having the manager approve is probably the easiest for the payroll processing department because then you have all the history of the time that was entered and, you know, when the manager approved it and all that. Um, if you already have a, pay, a time clock that's kind of keeping track of that info for you, then we can, of course, build an import from that that'll split all the time by these dimensions or, or jobs. Um, so we're really trying to add on to, you know, the, some of the major functionality in NAV kind of, you know, dimensions is a pillar of NAV's functionality and it, it gives you so many options um, for analysis purposes. And so we wanted to make sure we added, you know, a bunch of functionality around splitting payroll expenses by dimension because um, it's such a big part of NAV. And uh, same thing with the jobs module. If you're using the jobs module, the jobs and tasks can be, you know, extremely um, insightful and, and tell you what's making money and what's not. And uh, so we have an integration there. And then uh, the labor costing and the item ledger um, is the other big piece, which I will definitely show here in a little bit. So if we go back to the batch, um, you can see here that all these employees are lined up and ready to go, and they're actually all set as direct deposit employees. So I'm going to create an ACH file. I'm going to email all the check stubs. Uh, while the check stubs are emailing out, um, I do want to show that we have some online resources. If you go to our website and you click manual, um, we can give you a login and password um, if you're a customer, and then you can go through and look and see how to do pretty much anything. So It'll show you how to set up anything, step-by-step -step instructions with nice little red boxes around the button. You can also search if you get an error involving, say, a check number. 
we can search here and see check number must have a value in payroll header is kind of the number one error message that involves the check number. So we'll click on that. It'll show you the error message that you're probably getting. And then it'll show you um, a few different ways to resolve that error. Uh, since this is kind of a standard nav error and it doesn't tell you much about what you need to do to fix it, we've tried to expand to tell you that, you know, most of the time that check number isn't there because you haven't exported yet, things like that. Um, there's also some uh, error messages that you can get around ACHs. Again, uh, we have a bunch of instructions um, showing what you're probably missing is that you haven't set up the direct deposit amount in the, uh, the bank account information and in the employee card, so it's not finding anything to export to. Um, these, uh, these online manuals can be really helpful during implementation, especially in the first few months of using our, our NAV payroll system. So you can see four check stubs have been emailed out, so I'm going to transmit post this batch, and that's it. That's as, uh, that's as easy as it is to post a batch with NAV payroll. Uh, it's pretty quick, especially if you've got the PTO time getting approved, if you've got the holiday time coming in automatically from the calendar, things like that, that you're not having to manually change documents, then really it's just a matter of running the batch and you know double checking the amounts and, and posting it. Okay, so. Let's go into some of the setups. So let's dive a little bit deeper here. Um, try not to get too far into the weeds, but I wanna show that, you know, here's the PTO template that I applied to that employee. So you can see this is how you set it up with a labor division and then all your time. You can use lump sums if you don't accrue time. You can use um, lump sums and then put in a lump sum hours and anniversary date and just apply that amount of hours to the employee um, every year if you uh, prefer to do that instead of accruing per payroll period. Um, we do have a spouse dependent uh, setup. So if you have deductions that um, are, the calculation is, is just, do they have a spouse and how many dependents do they have? And that'll dictate the deduction amount or employer contribution amount. You can set that up in here. And then you don't have to do the calculation every time you set up the deduction, you just set the deduction to look at this table instead of being a fixed amount or percent of gross pay. And it'll look at this table and, and find the right deduction amount automatically. Um, union deductions, much the same thing. You can see that between eight and ten out dollars an hour, that it's 25 cent deduction for union, 10 to 15 is 50. And that way you can automatically look at this table, find the right record, which will calculate the correct deduction amount and automatically bring it into the payroll document. Mandatory fields is so that uh, you can make sure that you don't miss a field that's, um, you know, very important, like social security number or birthday. Uh, this, you can set these up as um, being mandatory. And then when you tr try to tr close the employee card, um, if the employee is not blocked, if it's, you know, an active employee, then it's going to look to this and make sure these fields are populated. Uh, base calendar, this is what I mentioned, where you can set up all your um, holiday time. So you can set up all your holiday time in advance and then it'll automatically come into the payroll document. And you can do this, uh, set up several different um, codes uh, in this payroll calendar list, and then put these on different employee uh, cards. So maybe, you know, production has um, different holiday schedule because they might work on Saturday sometime, things like that. You can set up different uh, payroll calendars and set up different days. Power BI setup. So this is, uh, so that you can filter tax tables in the background and then run uh, Power BI reports on them. Um, if you're familiar with, um, you know, the Power BI reporting or Power Pivot, um, that, that's what this is for. This will filter your um, data uh, and, and find the correct taxes and the correct um, state, things like that for whatever you may be doing. And then you can run reports like this. Um, so we have these reports already built and ready to go. Um, we can drop them into your uh, database. Uh, we just have a little payroll reporting database that we can drop in and point to your live. And then this will show you by quarter all the different, um, you know, federal earnings, federal withholding, Social Security earnings. And the really nice thing about this is it recs to your um, 941. So if you just pick, say, quarter four, then this would be your 941 reconcile. Um, 
if I want to pick just a single employee for the whole year, then this would be uh, the W-2 reconciled. You can see that this employee crossed over the Social Security limit. So that's why in quarter four, there was no earnings applicable to Social Security. Uh, you can see the Social Security um, amount of total employer and employee side stops here as well because they're over the limit. They crossed over the Medicare earnings additional tax here. Um, so this is a just extremely useful, uh, powerful report, and it's part of our um, BI reports that we can drop in uh, when you implement. We, you can also do things like this where you pull in material costs, labor costs, revenue, profit, and profit percentage. So this is giving you um, kind of touching on some of the things Witt uh, talked about in the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation. This is giving you your profit after material and direct labor costs. Um, so that's really a more accurate picture of gross margin is after these, um, after material and direct labor. And with the running NAV payroll, it's easy to get that direct labor cost because you have all your payroll um, information in your ERP system, which is a really powerful thing. Uh, it, you know, of course, the payroll is great and the functionality, we try to make it where it's um, extremely easy to use and very robust. Um, but uh, then the kicker is that now that you have all those um, payroll costs in your ERP system, let's use them to do some uh, deep analysis of your items or customers or, you know, maybe if you look at things by dimension, you can look at your labor costs, you know, of each department or dimension. Um, and it just gives you, you know, all kinds of information that you couldn't have unless you had that actual labor cost in your in your system. You can also do a little bit prettier reports here with the Power BI. You know, you can make a um, uh, some, you know, any type of graph you can make and refresh directly off of these Power BI views, and then it'll show you your labor cost, your material cost, your gross margin. You can see I'm negative on this item in gross margin, largely because I have such a high labor cost on it. And that's the type of information, you know, that can be really valuable. And then uh, these items all have a positive gross margin because my labor cost is much less. So that's some of the Power BI setup there. Um, don't want to go too far into posting setups because they're just like other places in NAB, but just to show them, uh, you have a payroll code, an employee posting group, and then that's going to um, drive the uh, expense to whatever GL account it should be. Um, the really nice part about this is on the withholdings and deductions, you might have different vendors for different uh, posting groups, um, but you don't have to set up different payroll codes. So you could have, you know, a uh, posting group that's in one state versus another, and they, and then uh, state income tax withholding would go to, of course, two different vendors, but you could still have that as state income tax um, is your payroll code and then just have two different posting groups to direct it to the correct vendor. When you post your payroll documents, um, these will post directly to the vendor. Show you right here. So you can see that everything's posting directly to the vendor from the payroll system. So you don't have to run a journal or do any additional steps after you post the payroll document. It's already sitting there as a liability on that vendor. And then when you run the payment journal, it's gonna bring it in um, to pay it, so it'll show you the total liability that you owe, which would be the amount that you're going to be depositing, uh, you know, through EFTPS to the federal government and any state entity that you're paying as well. Just makes it really easy to get those totals, and then you always have the detail behind it. So that's the posting setup. Um, payroll labor cost groups. This is so that you can uh, put employees in groups if you don't want to track um, each employee individually on different documents, then you can just put them in a group like this. And you can say that this group is on, you know, all sales orders or whatever it may be so that you tag these employees as being part of that, tag the labor cost that's associated with these employees as part of those documents. And that's how we drive our labor costing. Um, you can also just set it up on the employee card. So you don't have to create groups or do individual employees on documents. You can, it can be as simple as just putting it on the employee card that this employee is part of production or receiving or shipping or a combination of those. Um, and then if you want to get uh, really detailed here, you can actually split your GL cost into fixed, variable, and allocated so that you can um, ratchet up and down that variable cost uh, based on uh, the labor cost that goes into it. So if there's um, a bunch of uh, you know, if you're highly variable and your employees, you know, have a bunch of overtime and things like that, then the items um, 
then the items that are most associated with like being slow through the plant or fast through the plant, that's going to ratchet those costs up or down more than if you're a highly fixed facility. So you just have a bunch of fixed costs and really you're not, you know, the variable cost doesn't play a big role. So it just kind of goes into um, the throughput factors of the items and what moves fast and what moves slow and then how, what effect that has based on how much variable cost you have in your, um, in your GL. But this does not have to be set up. So this is just kind of like the most detailed level of the labor cost setup. I just wanted to show that it's available if you want to use it. Um, you do not have to set that part up. You can just uh, go with labor cost groups or just put up labor cost on the employees. And then it's going to automatically calculate uh, the labor cost based on the documents that are associated with. So if we look at an employee card here, um, we can see, you know, this one doesn't have a labor cost global, but the easiest way, it's actually part of a, um, a labor cost uh, group. But the easiest way to set this up is to just go in here and say this employee is part of all transactions, production, receiving, shipping, or two of those three. Um, so you can set it up right here on the employee card, or you can go a little bit deeper and you can set up employee groups or you can go um, even deeper than that and put individual employees on certain production or shipping receiving documents. And then if you wanna go kind of to the highest level of detail, then you would actually group your GL accounts into fixed and variable so that um, the applicable items get more labor cost if they have you know, a high variable factor versus a low one. Okay. Now let's go into um, the reporting a little bit. So I just want to show quickly that we do have your standard federal, um, you know, the, the big reports in here, 941, 940, W2, W3. If you're over 50 employees, then of course you have to create an electronic file for your W2. So that's why we create this export format so you can have all the W2 information in a nice, you know, Excel format that you can use to create that electronic file. Um, we also provide a service for $5 an employee of creating that uh, W-2 electronic file for you at the end of the year. So if you wanna do all your tax deposits, um, file all of your forms, except you just want at the end of the year uh, to get uh, you know, a secure PDF file with a password with all your W-2s to send out to your employees or hand out, and you want um, us to handle the uh, electronic file and upload that to the Social Security Administration, we can do that piece for you right at the end of the year, and then you would just do all the other filings um, here by printing out these reports. Um, we also have a payroll report with customizable layouts. So this is uh, really nice for um, kind of your ad hoc reporting. If you have a request from the uh, company that provides your 401k or a request um, from health insurance to show you know, certain pieces of information, um, instead of having to write a new report or dig through a bunch of ledgers and Excel files, you can just come in here and uh, build it your uh, build exactly what you need because all you have to do is choose the columns and then it's going to automatically group those and you can put on uh, a caption on those columns. So we and we can also do it by different levels. So you can do it by the employee level, posting group, labor division, or tax state. Um, you can do you can print the details so you can show every payroll period or just show everything grouped by this level over here and you can subtotal so you can subtotal by those same levels or you can subtotal by month or by year uh, and so how you choose your columns is um, about as easy as it can be you just click in here highlight your columns and click ok you can see it brings them all in automatically and i'm just going to call this column all learning okay and then when I choose this customized layout, then it's gonna change everything up here to be what is inside of the custom layout. Then I can filter on anything in my payroll ledger. So I can filter on payroll code, employee number, uh, posting date, uh, payment date. So I'm actually gonna move this to payment date since that would be more normal for when you're looking to tie back to your EFTPS deposits on your... Um, so let me go ahead and run this. So you can see here, this is in the exact order that we need to um, deposit on EFTPS, or this is, uh, if you're using this direct to your 941, same thing, you know, it shows you the Social Security, Medicare, federal withholding, 
and then all earnings over here in this column. And I just added all earnings right here on this demo. It wasn't even there before. So you can see how quick and easy it is to add a new column. And this encompassed a ton of different payroll codes. We had double time, um, overtime, regular, uh, holiday. We had a bunch of different earnings codes in there, uh, but we just grabbed them all and threw them into one column and uh, grouped them together. All right, so that's the payroll report. And then uh, let me show you over in the item ledger some of this labor costing, the information you can get out of it. Um, so what it gives you is it gives you a detail of every uh, transaction and it shows you the cost of labor um, by employee on that transaction. Um, so it'll give you the total cost of this employee associated with this transaction and then the cost per unit of this employee. So just right here, if you think about having all your direct labor employees lined up with a cost per unit every payroll period, that's pretty powerful information just by itself without even any of these other calculations. So you'll know, you know, based on the overtime of that employee and their salary and all that, and um, how many units um, they were involved in for that payroll period, you'll know what their cost per unit was at the end of the payroll period, and you can just pull that out uh, right here. Um, quickly want to mention that because this obviously is very, would be sensitive information, we have some additional security setups where you can set up a user to be able to see personal information, which will allow them to see, um, you know, the payroll employee salary and things like that, social security number. Um, you can also uh, set up where a person can actually see the card if you want, if they need to be able to see the card for some reason, but they can't see um, the salary and um, the other, you know, deductions, um, the other information that you probably wouldn't want um, them to see unless they were the actual payroll admin. And then the payroll admin can get checked off in that NAV uh, payroll setup table to see everything, to be able to reverse payroll documents and all that. So when you have that permission, that's when you can start seeing this type of stuff. If you don't have that permission, even if you're a super user, if you don't have a permission uh, set up separately in the payroll set up table, then you wouldn't be able to see these columns right here um, and you wouldn't be able to click into these columns, of course. So I uh, just wanted to mention that because obviously security is a big deal um, when it comes to payroll. Um, so you can see here that these, this was my cost of labor on these um, purchases. Then I have some output here. So I have a cost of uh, some uh, labor cost. Harrison Ford's in there again because I set him up with a global uh, labor global cost application of all. So he's just going to be part of all transactions. So that maybe that's the plant manager. He's part of everything. You just want his salary to be allocated to all different transactions around the plant. Whereas these employees are only production. So you can see Madeline Stowe and Tom Sizemore, um, their global, their label, uh, excuse me, uh, labor cost on their employee card is set to production. So they're not on these transactions over here. So these purchase transactions, don't you don't see those two employees because they're not set, uh, but you only see the all and the receiving employee. And then here we have um, James Franco disappears because he's the receiving employee and we have the production employees. And this is all, again, driven by that setting on the employee card. There's nothing else you have to do. If you wanna just set it on the employee card and forget about it, you can start there. And then if you want to get more detailed with the groups and things like that later, you can definitely do that. But it's as easy as just tagging an employee to be part of these transactions. Um, then here on the sales shipment, we can see that we have, again, our all employee Harrison Ford. And then we have two other employees. These two employees are part of shipping and they're actually part of an employee group that was put on this uh, sales order and shipping document. So you can see here that this uh, they cost three forty one per unit and four thirteen per unit. And the reason their unit cost is much higher is because there's not as many units that were shipped as the amount of units that were received and produced. And so therefore, you know, they have a higher labor cost per unit, which just makes sense because there wasn't as many units um, for this particular payroll po uh, period that were shipped. The really, uh, and then this is the, you know, kind of where it all rolls up together and gives you that one number that you're really looking for. Most of the time, the total uh, cost of goods sold labor cost this is going to group, this is going to um, sum, excuse me, the receiving, production, and shipping costs all together into the total labor cost here. And then what that does is right inside your item ledger, you have your gross margins after labor because you have your cost amount um, actual of material. You have your cost amount here of labor that was associated, um, not only the labor associated with the shipment, 
but actually the portion of receiving cost that was consumed into the production order, the production cost, um, the portion of the production that was shipped on this order, and then the total shipping cost all rolled up into one. All right, and so let's take a look at some of the history here real quick. Just to show you the type of information you're going to have, we have payroll ledger entries. So just like any other ledger in that, you have your ledger entries here. Um, they have all kinds of information in them. Um, if there's, you know, local tax, the state, um, the check number or remittance number. Um, if you have a job or task associated, it's going to show up right here. So you can see that employee that we posted, the very first one, shows up with these job and task numbers. Um, and if you want to pull those job and task over to the job ledger, it's as easy as just running our report, transfer payroll to job journal. I'm just going to hit OK. And you'll see, you'll recognize those from way back 30 minutes ago where we uh, had, you know, nine hours of double time. And there's the rate, 23 hours of regular. I think we had a one hour of overtime. So all of these are coming over from the actual payroll system. So you don't have to rekey this into the job journal or you know track this separately. You can just bring it directly over um, from the payroll ledger and post it against the job, which makes it, of course, really easy for analysis because then you can see your actual cost of that employee versus uh, whatever may have been invoiced. So let's go back to the payroll ledger one more time because I do want to show how easy it is to fix a mistake. So if you um, make a mistake and you want to reverse it, then you can uh, either go to the posted documents and find the posted payroll document that was uh, incorrect and reverse it, or you can reverse directly here from the payroll ledger and whatever line you're highlighted on, it'll bring in all the entries associated. So when we hit reverse transaction, you can see all the entries associated with this one payroll document, um, which payroll documents are pretty complicated. You can see how many different uh, transactions here are uh, part of this one payroll document, but to reverse it is quite easy. I just hit reverse. You can see these entries were successfully reversed. It will pop it right out of the uh, payroll ledger because I have reverse set to no. So this is an automatic um, filter that's set when you open up the payroll ledger, but you can go to reverse entries anytime you want and look at those because it's just a checkbox that says that it's reversed. Um, if you need to reverse multiple entries, you can hit this. And you can actually filter on a range of documents or on an individual payment date and then reverse everything at once. So if you make a mistake, you're not going to have to spend the next few days trying to get everything sorted out. It's as easy as um, just reversing all those transactions and then rerunning the batch. Um, I think that's about all I had to go over at the moment. Um, we have went through most everything. Wit, if I'm forgetting anything, please let me know. Um, if not, then we'd be happy to answer any questions that came in while we were doing the demo. Yes, Drew, we do have a question. Okay. What, what if Anovia clients want to leverage your labor costing and job costing functionality, but do not deal with the quarterly and annual document and tax filings. Do you have a yeah. solution for them? Yeah, so that's our um, so that's our painless payday premium. Uh, so that's we do run into that request a lot. They want to have the information in that, the employee information, um, you know, and then have all of that at the tip of their fingers so that they can run the labor cost or job costing but they don't want to do the deposits uh, either weekly or monthly, depending on how big they are, and they don't want to uh, file the 941s. And we are a reporting agent uh, for the IRS, so we can take care of those um, outsourcing responsibilities that are normally, you know, that you would outsource to paychecks or ADP. We can do that part, and we normally can do it um, for less than your typical outsourcer because we can pull this information from NAF payroll really efficiently because you know we're the ones who built it so we know how to get the information out um, in the exact way we need it to be able to make those deposits and file those forms um, so that would be our solution and that solution is on average around uh, fifty dollars per employee but it differs um, depending on what states you're in uh, and things like that but it's it on average it's about 50 bucks an employee 
Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much for that explanation. You're welcome. If anyone else has any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box. <clears throat> All right, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, okay. Do you guys have anything else that you want to say before we wrap up? Whit, is there anything that uh, we didn't touch on that you noticed? No, I mean, you, you've hit all the high points, uh, you know, just to kind of circle back to, to what we said at the beginning. You know, the solution's been designed to uh, allow users to process payroll uh, as, as easily as possible uh, and then leverage all of the, the great tools and great flexibility within NAV to, um, to then use that data to, to benefit you know, your, your position and your organization and uh, analyze, um, analyze costs more effectively. So uh, obviously there's more to the system and more details to the system than what Drew uh, was able to dive into today. But if there's any interest um, in learning more, reach out to uh, uh, your Inovia sales team and um, they'll be happy to uh, coordinate times and we'll be happy to get more, more into it at that time. Oh, yeah, and I guess I don't know if we mentioned that um, also we will be part of the user event coming up. So if anybody wants to talk to us in person, uh, we'll be there. Okay, well, then I will wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and thank you, Drew and Witt, for the presentation. It was very informative. And like um, Drew and Witt said, they will be at our customer conference. So we encourage you to attend our conference um, that's coming up April 18th and 19th. It'll be at the Chula Vista Resort and Conference Center in Wisconsin Dells. And it is a free event for you to attend. Um, so you'll be able to meet Wit and uh, Drew at the conference. And we have other ISVs that are going to be there. And you can meet the Anovia team as well. And also, um, check out our events. On our website uh, we're always updating um, our events and we have a couple of them coming up uh, yet this month we have merge tool doing a presentation on nav easy security on April 11th and Tom Doran from Anovia consulting will be presenting on Outlook integration with nav it's finally here and charge logic will be presenting um, on the 25th of April, PCI Validated Payment Processing Solutions. So if any of those topics interest you, uh, we encourage you to register for any of those events. And like I said, the webinar is recorded. It will be available um, by the end of the week on our website. So feel free to share with any of your colleagues and friends. And we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, Angie. You're welcome. Thank you.